Hi, everyone. Uh, today, I talk about a specific discipline organizations are more and more considering in cybersecurity, which is threat intelligence. So we'll see in this presentation how threat intelligence can enrich your cybersecurity operations by providing you with all the knowledge you need on adversaries that can affect your organization. So first of all, let me introduce myself briefly. Uh, I am Valentin Waki. I am French and I am the intelligence practice lead for Southern Europe uh, at Crossrike, which means that I am in charge of helping Crossrike customers to better understand and also operationalize threat intelligence and threat hunting in their cybersecurity activities. I have a specialty both in cybersecurity and geopolitics with previous field experiences in two French industrial companies. And in one of these companies uh, that was a manufacturing one, I launched threat intelligence capabilities in the SOC, uh, leading a team of security analysts in charge of exploiting technical threat intelligence, as well as managing vulnerabilities. And I'm not a security engineer. Um, I've graduated from a political science with a specialty uh, in international relations and security. So this was just uh, to show you a little bit about my background uh, before going more into details uh, into the content uh, of this session. So during this presentation, um, after making an introduction on what are the main observations we've seen in the cyber threat landscape in the last months and years, I'll make a focus on the e-crime ecosystem and more especially on some e-crime adversaries that have been very active in the last months. I'll then talk about threat intelligence, what it is exactly, what are the benefits of implementing threat intelligence capabilities and how you can operationalize it in your daily cybersecurity activities. And finally, concluding with some uh, recommendations. So for those of you who are new world to Crossrike, our approach to security has always been focused on adversaries. And this approach also applies to all the solutions we provide to our customers. Why? Because by knowing your adversaries, uh, their motivations and intents, their techniques and their tactics, you will be in a position where you will be able to better anticipate them and in the end, better protect your organization against them. And we have the capacity at Crossrail to see exactly and to know exactly what adversaries are doing thanks to our intelligence collection capabilities, especially because we collect high confidence telemetry from endpoints of Crossrail customers that are located everywhere in the world and also operating uh, in all sectors. sectors. And it's more important than ever to focus on adversaries. Why? Because you no longer have a malware problem. Because one malware can be leveraged by different, different adversaries with different motives. And also what we have observed lately is that most intrusions are carried out without any malware, with legitimate tools that are used in inside organizations that are targeted what makes even more necessary the need to know other elements that are related to adversaries, such as uh, their tactics and their techniques. At Crossrike, we follow today uh, 225 adversaries that we classify either by their motivation, either by their origin. The first one being nation states, uh, who mostly target government organizations or critical sectors uh, for political or economic interest. Then we have e-crime threat actors who are mainly interested by financial gains. And finally, what we call activism, who target organizations for political motive, ideological motive. So during this presentation, I will mostly focus on e-crime trends are there and e-crime adversaries are there as they are considered as the most observed on every uh, organization. 
Some of the main attack trends we've observed lately at a global level. The first one being an increasing number of high-profile e-crime attacks on large organizations that are considered as valuable for attackers. The second one being malware-free techniques, compromising identity and using valid credentials as a first point of entry into their victim without deploying any malware. Then we have espionage from uh, nation state adversaries for political or economic motive or on public or private um, targeted organizations. Then vulnerability exploitation, uh, we observe every week a growing number of highly critical vulnerabilities that are disclosed and the rapidity at which exploits are published and exploited by adversaries is also impressive. And finally, we've observed more and more cloud conscious adversaries, uh, e-crime or nation state adversaries with the ability to target, to target any cloud platform. If we make a focus on e-crime trends uh, cross right as observed lately, here are some of observation, observations we've done, and we talk also about some of the most active e-crime adversaries nowadays. So we have at, at Crossrike what we call the e-crime breakout time. This is basically the, the time it takes for an adversary first to gain an initial access to a victim's environment, and then to achieve lateral movement. So in 2019, uh, the average e-crime breakout time was, was uh, 582 minutes. In 2022, it was 84 minutes only. And in 2023, five minutes less with 79 minutes as an average. So this shows uh, that adversaries are more and more sophisticated. They know how to compromise victims quicker um, forcing organizations to be much more prepared to detect and respond to the com compromise on, in no time. To understand better what we call the e-crime ecosystem, we also need to understand that an attack most of the time is not carried out by a single threat actor, uh, but by several, several threat actors that are involved at different steps of the attack. First, the services that are sold on deep and dark web to other threat actors. Then the distribution of these capabilities to victims. And finally, what we call the monetization of these attacks. And if we now break down all these three components of the e-crime ecosystem, we observe that in services we, we have, um, that in services that are sold, there are what we call access brokers. So access brokers are actors uh, who sell initial access to networks of organizations on criminal forums um, of the deep and dark web. This can be VPN accesses or RDP accesses that, that are then used by uh, other groups like uh, ransomware groups, for example, to gain a first first access to the um, uh, to the network of their of, of their victims. In servicing in services that are sold, there are also some phishing kits, some malware or ransomware as a service, some DDoS tools, or also some web inject uh, kits to compromise uh, e-commerce e websites. Then other ac actors are responsible. Um, of the distribution of the malicious payload uh, to their victims through spam uh, on social network, uh, through phishing emails, uh, through the, the, the exploitation of uh, vulnerabilities, etc. And finally, when the attack has occurred, there are other uh, actors that are in charge of the monetization of these attacks capitalizing on successful execution. So for example, through the management and retrieval of, um, of the ransom that can be paid by, by some victims or also some money laundering. I will talk a little bit about LogB3.0, which is currently the most active ransomware variant. 
So this ransomware is operated by uh, an adversary, an e-crime adversary that is called Bitwise Spider, one of the most prolific big game hunting operator uh, since 2019. So Bitwise Spider uh, gained popularity with the launch of Logbit 3.0 in June 2021. And we estimate that it affected around three to four victims per day. They also maintain a dedicate, dedicated leak site where they correspond with victims, they leak their data um, if the ransom is not, isn't paid. And they also have uh, their own information stealer malware, which is called Stillbit, which allows, uh, allows them to, to exfiltrate uh, victim data. Logbit also affect a large range of sectors and countries, uh, but they mainly focus on large, or, large organizations. And on October 2021, uh, they have released um, uh, an update to also encrypt uh, virtual machines created by VMware ESXi. And finally, they have announced uh, in June 2022 and a new update to their ransomware. They, they now call their ransomware LogB3.0, and they provide uh, new special offerings for VIP members. Let's now make a focus on Scattered Spider, uh, a prolific e-crime adversary who has gained attention due to the high-profile nature of their victims, and also they have gained attention uh, due to its recent focus on cloud environments since Q2, Q2 uh, 2023. So Scattered Spider consists in at least four individuals that are located between the US and the UK and has conducted several um, social engineering campaigns, primarily against firms specializing in customer, customer relationship management, as well as telecommunications and also some technology companies. He uses um, phishing pages to capture authentication credentials uh, for Okta, for Microsoft O365, uh, from VPNs, etc. But they also use techniques of, of smishing. Smishing is a phishing by SMS, or also vishing uh, for voice phishing. Uh, to share uh, one-time password codes um, and overwhelm targets using multi-factor authentication notification fatigue, uh, which is basically spamming user uh, with authentication messages until they give up and click on the bait. And they are also known for deploying ransomwares like uh, the Alpha V ransomware variant, which is a very, um, very observed um, very often observed uh, nowadays. So how to counteract these kinds of e-crime adversaries? With threat intelligence, of course. Uh, so in cybersecurity, organizations tend to adopt a reactive posture due to the lack of resources and also the lack of time. With threat intelligence, you can enrich all other cybersecurity activities to improve your detection and reaction um, and, and also allowing, um, allowing you to, to adapt faster to, to, to the, the adversaries that are becoming more sophisticated and more in, innovative. Threat intelligence is really the DNA of CrossStrike. Uh, CrossStrike was founded 11 years ago around incident response services but also threat intelligence, and then was developed around uh, several solutions, including, of course, your endpoint protection, uh, which is uh, the most famous um, uh, feature of CrossStrike. At CrossStrike, we have a specificity, which is our intelligence collection. We collect intelligence from different sources, the first one being the endpoints, they receive more than 1 trillion of events per day, which gives more reliable IOCs on threat actors because they are being collected directly and in real time from endpoints of cross threat customers located everywhere in the world and also in all sectors. 
So it allows us to see exactly what adversaries are doing, what sectors, what, what countries they are targeting. And we also collect intelligence from our um, threat hunting activities, our uh, incident response activities, um, our, our forensic, uh, our forensics uh, from the dark web and the, the open source, and also some network telemetry via onipots that are located globally. So this creates a very comprehensive collection apparatus, which constitutes um, our intelligence brain, we call uh, at Crossrack um, our, our threat graph. We then have a team of intelligence analysts with very different expertises, uh, including, including an expertise in tracking APTs, in tracking e-crime adversaries, some have an expertise, uh, an expertise in geopolitical and geopolitics or uh, linguistic expertise. Um, and then these analysts uh, will then transform raw intelligence into actionable uh, intelligence through intelligence automation. So IOCs, finished uh, intelligence reports, intelligence on, uh, on adversaries on the, or, or intelligence on the deep and dark web. The idea of threat intelligence is moving from reactive, where you react to an, to an alert without having uh, any ability to prioritize your actions, nor having the tools to go deeper into investigations, to proactive with threat intelligence, consuming threat intelligence on the tactical, operational, and strategic level, and answering the questions the following questions. What is happening? How and where attacks are likely to come from? Who is likely to target me and why? Let's take a look at some examples. Let's consider, for example, Wicked Panda. Wicked Panda is a Chinese adversary that may be likely to, to target your organization. Why? For espionage. What? Deploying shadow pad backdoor and how? Exploiting vulnerabilities. Another example, Bitwise Spider, the operator of Logbit 3.0. Why? To deploy a ransomware for financial gains. What? Deploying a Logbit 3.0 ransomware variant. And how? Buying some valid credentials that are provided by access brokers on the deep and dark web. So to stop breaches, you need to understand uh, the adversary, their motivations uh, and intents based on yourselves, your organization, and finally, understanding the, the relationship between your adversaries and your organization. And this understanding enables you to take better security decisions. To know your adversary, threat intelligence will address three levels of knowledge, the strategic, the operational, and the tactical levels. So this is how you will understand uh, the motive and intents of adversaries, uh, their expertise, and their TTPs, so tactics, techniques, and procedures uh, as, a, as a possible threat to your organization. So how to implement concretely threat intelligence in your organization based on your level of maturity? The first stage would be to automate the ingestion of indicators of compromise or also called, also called IOCs into your security tools. Also uh, setting up some uh, monitoring rules to reduce your digital risk on the open deep and dark web and also using a sandbox to understand uh, any incom incoming threats. The second stage would be to go deeper uh, into intelligence on adversaries that are likely to target your organization, uh, to know, for example, what are the TTPs associated, um, associated with, with this adversary in order to perform some threat hunting uh, with some detection rules, with uh, MITRE attack, etc. 
the stage three is the highest level of implementation, getting to the strategic level of intelligence, developing a priority intelligence requirement, um, implementing an intelligence program, a, a very comprehensive intelligence program with the, the identification of key stakeholders within, within your organization who will consume finished threat intelligence and take some security decisions based on the recommendations that are provided. So now, what's next uh, for you? We usually say that your ability to defeat uh, to defeat advanced cyber threats rests most, almost entirely on your understanding of the problem and the problem being your adversary. Whether it's a ransomware, whether it's a vulnerability, there's a, there is a human element behind every attack and understanding it gives you the ability to improve your defenses and also to prevent any attack from targeting your, your organization. So thank you very much for your attention uh, and do not hesitate to contact me by email or LinkedIn. Uh, my name is Valentine Waki. Um, if you have any question uh, following this presentation. Thank you very much.